Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you're looking for a friendly, supportive vermiculture community, you are in the right place. Today, I'm going to be looking at the red wigglers in my worm tower and talk about how to deal with your worm system when the worms don't really do what the instructions are telling you they should be doing. Now, I'm new to worm towers, so I'm gonna show you what it's supposed to be done per the instructions, and then I'm gonna show you what I'm doing and why. If at the end of this video you want to get one just like this, I will put a link below to my Amazon store where you can purchase said item if you are so inclined. If you do, I do get a small commission. That helps me make more videos for this channel. Now the instructions indicate that you should start with a tray with food in the bedding on the first layer. And then after a few weeks, you stop ma managing that layer and you put another layer on there with more food and bedding and so on and so on until you get to the top. And eventually what you're going to do in theory is harvest that bottom layer. And all the worms will have come up to meet the food and everything is lovely. It has not been my experience that this is what the worms do. In the years that I had my DIY system, I experienced that worms go up, they go down, they don't even pay attention to where their food is, they tend to congregate where they congregate. And I don't have an explanation for that, but I do uh, feel as though I can manage this system in such a way that I can make all the worms safe and happy and still get my castings relatively easily. When I started this bin, I decided that I was going to use the system that another channel uses for their worm tower. Now that would be Patrick and Amber at Vermicompost Learn By Doing. And what they're doing is they're taking advantage of exactly what I'm talking about, which is that the worms don't necessarily go up or down when they're supposed to. So first of all, what we have here is the harvest tray. Now this was not fed last time. This just uh, has been sitting up here kind of foraging as AV would say. So I'm gonna collect up all the little bits and pieces here that they have not finished. And then as I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna aggravate the worms to go down into the layer below. And this is how we harvest the tower system. This tray has had food, it's, you know, now it's been resting and hopefully I will get a relatively clean casting harvest here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start picking up the castings off the top and when I get to the part where there are worms then I'm going to start fluffing it up rather vigorously and that is going to show the worms that it is time to get out and go to the layer below. And all of these castings that I'm pulling out right now are going to dry on my bin blue for a week or so. So we're not gonna lose any worms, just in case, like this guy. We're not gonna lose any worms. We're basically just going to be relocating them to a different bin should they get caught up in this, as well as all of the cocoons that are likely to be in here as well. Hopefully running the system with the harvest tray, future harvest tray on the top, giving all of the worms a chance to go down to the food, I am not going to have to work too hard to get this harvest. So I'm just gonna do that aggravation. I'm gonna take out my little risers here. And then Hopefully all of the worms, once I get this aggravation thing going, they will exit quickly and go to the tray below, which I do have the number four tray right below this. So when we get done, we will be able to see all of the worms in tray four. Nope, dude, you're going the wrong way. Down. All right, so we're gonna give it a little bit of time I'm gonna pull out any sort of big stuff here and then I'll bring you back and show you how long it's taken. Okay. A little more off the top here. I'm 
more fluffing. And here we go again. Basically in the amount of time it takes me to go water the rest of the overwintered peppers in the basement, the worms are diving down. So it does take, it's not really a, a light migration, but it it's sort of like that where you're just waiting for the worms to get out of your way. Getting close to the end. It's only been about five minutes, 10 minutes. Also kind of trying to get the corners here. And this isn't real dry. This is nothing I would be able to sift. So it's a good thing the worms are moving out on their own. Okay, then here we are. Everybody else who's uh, in a straggler is gonna go live with blue. Okay, I'm gonna pick out these big ones that I can see, but uh, everybody else is uh, gonna move. Okay, so this is the layer that is now going to get harvested the next time I come in here. And you can tell there's nice castings here. And uh, this should be ready to roll the next time that I want to come in here and harvest. But this is not the exciting one. The next one down is the one that I'm gonna feed. So let me move this out of the way and we'll get the feeding tray. All right, so this, the last time, was just wet cardboard and paper, and you can see quite a bit of the inoculated paper here. And uh, you can definitely still see the bedding, but what you are seeing is worms and castings as well. So this bed, or this particular area, I'm just going to unstick it so that it gets nice and fluffy so the worms can come and go as they please. But, uh, so this is gonna be where we're going to feed today. I'm gonna take the risers that were in the top that got harvested and put them in here. And then we're not gonna add any bedding because this bedding has already been pre-inoculated and is basically worm baby food. So let's get them some food. Okay, what we have for food here is the last of the zucchini. And uh, the worms probably will get through this in the three or four weeks that I do in between feedings. There's about five pounds of worms in this uh, system and uh, a little old zucchini, which is, you know, very spongy. Hasn't been frozen or anything, so it might take a little bit longer, but the worm should consider this basically uh, baby food. So I'm gonna bury that a little here. Now, there shouldn't be any problems with uh, bugs getting in the system because everything is closed up. Have not seen any evidence of that. Uh, if you have a stack system, let me know if you ever experience any kind of uh, bug invasion. All right, let's get on to the next layer. Okay, these are layers one and two. This is layer two. This is the oldest of the inoculating trays. You can, still, you can see there's lots of worms in here. The bedding is pretty, pretty darn uh, new. This started out just as regular paper. And this was the new tray two feedings ago. Never put any food in here. I This is <clears throat> only wet because of the liquid coming from the trays above that are dripping down. And you can see this has got just as many worms as the other trays. This is what I mean by you can't necessarily go by the rules and expect your worms to follow the rules. By, by all logic, these worms should not be down here. There's no food down here. There's no people food anyway, just bedding. And yet there's a lot of them down here. Um, so for whatever reason, worms, they do what they want. And if I want to keep them happy and healthy, I have to provide them with a way to, to do that, even when they make bad life decisions and go to a different part of the bin that they're not supposed to be in. Which is why I do this um, by the 
Patrick method that I'm going to give the worm some place to be and be healthy no matter which decision they make. If they make the decision to go up or go down, they'll have some place that they can hang out and stay alive. So this one below is also where we put brand new dry bedding the last time we looked at this video, looked at this bin. You can tell it's actually still pretty dry down there, right? And yet, I still have worms in here. Even though there's no food, it's not a very good moisture. Um, and yet they're still down here. Uh, bad life decisions, I, you know, sorry, but there's enough moisture in here that they, they can live. I mean, there's little pockets of wetness and then I just fed today, which means there will be water coming from the food. But this is what I mean by they really kind of uh, don't follow the rules by all, by all rules, these should not be here, but they are. So I'm going to make sure that they're healthy by keeping a place for them to be. All right, I'm going to go grab the sump. So speaking of bad life decisions, we've got a bunch of worms down here that, um, and springtails that have come and decided that this is, this is where they're going to be. And in theory, this angled piece here should be a worm ladder that's gonna keep all of them from dying and drying out in the sump here. I don't smell any dead worms and I don't see any dead worms, but I have been putting some coconut coir down here so that when they event, you know, inevitably do go down here, there is some kind of uh, substrate for them to be in so that they don't die. I don't think I'm going to have them making any sort of evolutionary decisions, like all the dumb ones will be weeded out after a while. Um, I just think this is the way it is. So I just put that there and I'm going to get some coconut coir. So I just put a little tiny bit in here. Um, it'll collect moisture over time and then the worms will have something when they're down here. Um, because I just don't want them to end up down here and dying. Uh, if anybody's had a worm die off, you know that is like the worst smell on the planet. So I just put a little bit down here for insurance. So now I'm going to put this in the new order. Okay, this is the brand new dry paper. I actually did put the crumbs that didn't digest off the top in here. This is dry, it's got a little coconut coir, it's got a little bit of eggshell in here. So this is now tray number one. So this will absorb all the moisture and hopefully keep the worms out of this layer for at least a little while so they can eat the food. So then this is the old tray number one. So that is going to be the new um, tray number two. Like I said, look at the diagram, it's confusing. So this one, although it's pretty dry, it's got a few worms in it, um, but as time goes by, this will get more wet and uh, the worms will be just fine. Okay, and here we are all back again. So now you got four, three, two, one, and then what used to be the number five is now number one. All right, so if you like this video or the Red Wigglers, I have a playlist that I will put right over here. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like that video up there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.